on race relations, which has been called the Bible of the Civil Rights Movement. Mere Doll's scripture standardized the general white American culture, then judged African American culture as distorted or pathological from that standard. Whoever makes the cultural standard makes the cultural hierarchy. The act of making a cultural standard and hierarchy is what creates cultural racism. To be anti-racist is to reject cultural standards and level cultural difference. Segregationists say racial groups cannot reach their superior cultural standards. Assimilationists say racial groups can, with effort and intention, reach their superior cultural standards. It is to the advantage of American Negroes as individuals and as a group to become assimilated into American culture and to acquire the traits held in esteem by the dominant white Americans, Mirdal suggested. Or, as President Theodore Roosevelt said in 1905, the goal should be to assimilate the backward race so it may enter into the possession of true freedom while the forward race is enabled to preserve unharmed the high civilization brought out by its forefathers. Even Alexander Cromwell, the stately Episcopalian priest who founded the first formal black intellectual society in 1897, urged his fellow black Americans to assimilate. He agreed with those racist Americans who classified Africans as fundamentally imitative. This quality of imitation has been the grand preservative of the Negro in all the lands of his thraldom. Cromwell preached in 1877. We certainly weren't imitating anything on the ad. To the contrary, the wider culture was avidly imitating and appropriating from us. Our music and fashion and language were transforming the so-called mainstream. We did not care if older or richer or whiter Americans despised our non-standard dress, like our non-standard bonnets. We were fresh, like they just took the plastic off us, as Jada Kiss rap. Fresh, baggy jeans sagging down. Fresh, button-down shirts or designer sweatshirts in the winter under our bubble coats. Fresh tees or sports jerseys in the summer above our baggy jean shorts. Dangling chains shining like our smiles. Piercings and tattoos in bold colors told the mainstream world just how little we wanted to imitate them. Freshness was about not just getting the hottest gear, but devising fresh ways to wear it in the best tradition of fashion, experimentation, elaboration, and impeccable precision. Timberland boots and Nike Air Force Ones were our cars of choice in New York City. It seems as if everyone, girl or boy, had weak colored tins in their closets if they could afford or snatch them. Our black Air Force Ones had to be blacker than prison populations. Our white Air Force Ones had to be whiter than the NYPD, had to be as smooth as baby skin, no blemishes, no creases. We kept them black or white through regular touch-ups and paint sticks. We stuffed our shoes at night with paper or socks to ward off creasing in the front. Time to put on the shoes in the morning? Many of us knew the trick to keep the creases away all day. Put on a second sock halfway and fold the other half twice on top of my toes to fill out the front of the sneaker. It hurt like those tight guest jeans around the waist of shorties. But who cared about pain when fresh brought so much joy? Jason Riley a Wall Street Journal columnist did not see us or our disciples in the 21st century as fresh cultural innovators. Black culture today not only condones delinquency and thuggery, but celebrates it to the point where black youths have adopted jail fashion in the form of baggy, low-slung pants and oversized t-shirts. But there was a solution. If blacks can close the civilization gap, the race problem in this country 
is likely to become insignificant. Dinesh D'Souza once reasoned, civilization is often a polite euphemism for cultural racism. I hated what they called civilization, represented most immediately by school. I loved what they considered dysfunctional, African-American culture, which defined my life outside school. My first taste of culture was the black church. Hearing strangers identify a sister and brother, listening to sermonic conversations, all those calls from preachers, responses from congregants, bodies swaying and Holy Ghost mounting women for wild shouts and basketball sprints up and down aisles, flying hats covering the new wigs of old ladies who were keeping it fresh for Jesus. Funerals livelier than weddings, watching Ma dust off her African garb and dad his dashikis for Kwanzaa celebration livelier than funerals. I love being in the midst of a culture created by my ancestors who found ways to recreate the ideas and practices of their ancestors with what was available to them in the Americas through what psychologist Linda James Myers calls the outward physical manifestations of culture. These outward physical manifestations our ancestors encountered included Christianity, the English language, and popular European food, instruments, fashion, and customs. Culturally racist scholars have assumed that since African Americans exhibit outward physical manifestations of European culture, North American Negroes in culture and language are essentially European, to quote anthropologist Franz Boas in 1911. It is very difficult to find in the South today anything that can be traced directly back to Africa, attested sociologist Robert Park in 1919. Stripped of his cultural heritage, the Negro's reemergence as a human being was facilitated by his assimilation of white civilization, wrote sociologist E. Franklin Frazier in 1939. As such, the Negro is only an American and nothing else, argued sociologist Nathan Glazer in 1963. He has no values and culture to guard and protect. In the final analysis, we are not Africans, Bill Cosby told the NAACP in 2004. It is difficult to find the survival and revival of African cultural forms using our surface-sighted cultural eyes. Those surface-sighted eyes assess a cultural body by its skin. They do not look behind, inside, below. Those surface-sighted eyes have historically looked for traditional African religions, languages, foods, fashion, and customs to appear in the Americas just as they appear in Africa. Where they did not find